imagine that it's the middle of the night and you are walking down the streets of Denver and you hear this squeaky noise coming from an alley. And as you pass the alley, you glance down and you look and there's this shadowy figure pulling a red wagon filled with knapsacks that are filled with... My name is Lisa Cotter and this is Ascension Presents. Here in Denver, we have a saint in the making who I like to call my hometown hero. Her name is Servant of God, Julia Greeley. This art's done by my friend Maddie Torres, and I just love Julia Greeley so much. So when I say that she's a saint in the making, what I mean is that right now her cause for canonization is open. As a servant of God, one day she might become a saint, Time will tell. Now at first glance, if you look at the life of Julia Greeley, you might not think that she fits the profile of a saint. She didn't found a religious order. She wasn't a miracle worker. She doesn't even have any spiritual writings because she actually didn't know how to read or write. She lived a very humble, simple, hidden life. Julia Greeley was born into slavery in the 1830s, and then she was emancipated sometime between the age of 20 and 30 years old. From there, she moved to Denver, Colorado, where she worked as a hired servant for different families. And when steady work was hard to find, she worked as a day laborer doing menial tasks throughout the day whatever she could to get by. That's how Julia had to live. Well, she converted to Catholicism when she came to Colorado, and she had a deep devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, which is why it's so fitting that she died on the Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus on June 7th, 1918. Now, something really unexpected happened after her death. You see, Julia was this marginalized, uneducated woman who had no known family. But when it came time for her wake, almost all of Denver showed up. For five hours, there was a steady stream of people coming through the church to say their goodbyes to Julia, despite the fact that there was no mention of it in the newspaper. It was all word of mouth. People dropped what they did to come and say and pay their respects and goodbyes to Julia. And as people were gathering and talking, they began to realize that there was a hidden life of Julia that everybody kind of knew about, but nobody talked about because they had no idea how vast and amazing this life was. You see, when Julia wasn't working, she would go around and she would make visits to friends or she would be involved in different events going on at her parish. And all the while, she was making mental notes. She was noting the things that people were in need of. And then at night, she would find those items, put them in her red wagon, carry them down the street, and deliver them to the doorsteps of people in secret. So many stories began to surface about times where they encountered Julia doing this secret, kind of St. Nicholas type work. There was one man who talked about a time when he was a little kid, he saw Julia hiding behind this bush and she, she kind of whispered to him and pulled him over. And she said, listen, there's some potatoes that I left at this family's doorstep and it's gonna get really cold tonight and I'm afraid they're gonna freeze and be ruined and they haven't noticed the potatoes yet. So I need you to go run, knock on the door and then run away as fast as you can. And if anybody asks you, don't you tell them that Julia sent you. Stories like this kept popping up over and over again. There was a story of a time where Julia was was serving punch at one of the Paris Hall events. It was a dance for these young girls. And she was looking around and she noticed that there were certain girls missing. And so after the dance, she went and inquired to the families and asked, well, why weren't your daughters there? What was going on? Why didn't they come? And she found out that these girls didn't have dresses. They didn't have proper dresses to be able to wear to these dances. And so they were too embarrassed to come. And so what did Julia do? She went to an affluent neighborhood next door. She knocked on doors and convinced people that their daughters needed new dresses. And so she would take these old used dresses and she would redress them with new lace and ribbons. And then she would secretly leave them at the doorsteps of who she called her girls so that they could join in and come to these dances. There are all kinds of stories about Julia. One where she was leaving a baby buggy at a new mom's doorstep. Another where she was seen in the back alley carrying a mattress on her back. So apparently somebody needed a new bed. Julia noticed she found a bed and she was bringing it to their house. Julia even gave up her own grave. 
She heard that somebody had died and they were gonna be buried in a common grave in a potter's field. And she said, no, this person deserves a place of burial, a place of dignity. And she gave up her own grave for this man. You see, stories of Julia kept coming and kept coming and kept coming because Julia's generosity knew no limits. If there was something that somebody needed, she figured out a way to do it. And I love the uniqueness of how she gave. And there are so many things that we can learn from Julia. So many things that stood out to me as I continued to read these testimonies and read these stories about her life. You see, Julia's generosity, it was creative. I used to think that to be generous, you had to have a lot of money. Like you had to be able to build a hospital somewhere or you had to get an award at some kind of a fundraising gala in order to be considered generous. But Julia proves that a little creativity goes a long way. One of my favorite stories of this is from when she was um, wanting to help her parish fundraise for something, but she didn't have any money. But the parish was putting on a beauty contest where girls could sell 10 cent tickets to get a vote for this beauty contest. Now, I'm pretty sure that this contest was supposed to be for the young girls of the parish, but Julia, in all of her joy, she was known for her great joy, went around and fundraised and sold 350 10 cent tickets and wiped the entire competition. This woman who had barely anything for herself couldn't give money, found a creative way to be able to fundraise for her church anyway. Another great story is about a time when she didn't give of money or of resources, but where she gave of her time. At night, where when Julia was out leaving her items in secret, if she heard a baby crying, she would knock on the door, come into the house, and tell the mom, you go to bed, I've got this. And she would take the baby and rock and soothe the baby until the baby went back to sleep. Julia's creativity, her generosity, didn't require a ton of money. It just required a deep love of people, which Julia clearly possessed. Another thing that Julia's generosity was is intentional. Julia knew the needs of her community because she knew her community. She didn't have any family. Those people were her people. She knew which girls needed dresses because she was there serving punch at the dances. She knew who needed a mattress because she was going and visiting in homes and seeing what people were living like and recognizing where their needs were. I don't even know if this person mentioned that they didn't need a mattress, probably not, but Julia was watching. I love this about her because it shows that, yeah, random acts of kindness can be great and amazing, but intentional acts of kindness, acts of kindness where we stop and we pause and we think about the people we know and love and we pay attention to what it is that they need, that to me is really true generosity. One more thing that Julia's generosity was and that is fearless. Julia did not fear that God would not provide for her. She knew that God could not be outdone in generosity. She had next to nothing yet she was constantly giving things away. One witness said that when you would give Julia something like, like a piece of fruit or a candy, it would go into her little knapsack and you knew she didn't keep it for herself. You knew she took it on to the next house she went to visit and gave it away there. Julia only took what she needed and she made sure that everybody else was provided for first. And in this way, she never lived in fear. She knew God would always provide and he did. Remember how Julia gave up her grave for someone that she possibly didn't even know? Well, in the end, it turns out that Julia actually didn't even need that spot. If you go to the Basilica Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception in Denver, Colorado, to the left of the altar, there's a white marble tomb. It's the only tomb in the entire cathedral, and buried inside of it is Julia Greeley. So if you want to learn more about Julia Greeley, check out my new book, Reveal the Gift, Living the Feminine Genius. Know of my prayers and be saints. It's worth it.